The Huddle is brought to you by Canadian's Destination Centre Fort Gary. Tavern United Fort Gary, a new world sports pub. Watch your favourite games on two brand new 70-inch monitors on our patio located at 1824 Pembina Highway in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the huddle. Scott Taylor, John Mackey. Another busy show this week. We had a lot of green on the show this yeah. week. Yeah. Rifles. Rifles and Vincent Massey Trojans. That's right. I don't want to get them mixed up with the purple guys, the Vikings from Brandon. No, don't do These that. These are the Trojans from Winnipeg. That's right. Um, and, and they're going green. Not just green uniforms, but um, they've decided to get as much paper out of their program as they can. Hey. So the guys are going to iPads. It's a, it's That's a great right. story. It is. Stuff. It's unbelievable. Um, and, and we're going to talk today to a gentleman named Trevor Esau who's looking for referees mm -hmm. for kids football for 14 and under. So if you're 15 or 16 years old and you're a football guy and you want to make some money uh, on a weekend during the summer refing the kids football, um, get out and referee the 10, 11, 12 year olds. It's so a good it's, way it's to make money. Yep. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. So a really busy show. Um, Evan Vitt from the um, Rifles is on he the show He looks like a Vitt, doesn't he? Yeah. Just like his, his, his brother. brother yeah. Who plays for the, the Bisons, yeah. of course. And he was a rifle. Uh, uh, he was a rifle well. as well. Yeah. How, how's camp going with you? Very good. Yeah, Very good. Guys are getting really We're looking good. really good. Yeah, you got lots of players. Oh yeah, Can lots of players. Good, good talent everywhere. Quarterback. We're looking. We're gonna start Bison's weekly here pretty soon. That's right. Yeah, we're starting with Brian Doby, and uh, get the Bison's on every week. Um, lots going on. We start uh, Rifles Weekly this week. First time for our Rifles Weekly, um, and we have um, Trevor Esau on to talk about refereeing. There's lots going on. Uh, this is the huddle. We're coming right back. Community created on Shaw TV. This is The Huddle. I'm Scott Taylor, and my guest is Trevor Esau. No relation to Johnny. No relation to Johnny. I was going to say I knew your granddad, but... Yeah, I no, I guess you didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Um, Trevor is the referee-in-chief with the Manitoba Football Referees Association, and I want to be clear with this, it's Bantam and Younger. That's correct, 14 years old and down. So the MFOA is midget and higher. Yes, correct. So, so you have the younger guys. Um, How would you get involved in officiating? I had a passion for football. I grew up watching the Bombers. I was introduced, okay, I, my very first Bomber game I went to. Didn't know anything about football. My dad takes me to the Bomber game, 1982, Bombers in Calgary. Uh, Bombers again, it was a good game. Came down to the last play of the game. Bombers are down by four points, 15 to 11. Last play of the game, Bombers thrown into the end zone, into the receiver's hands, out of the receiver's hands. Bombers lose. Nonetheless, I'm addicted. So I became very <laughs> passionate about football. I grew up in Steinbeck. We didn't have minor football in the area at that time. So I grabbed a rule book, started studying rules. Push came to shove, didn't get a chance to flip play, got too old, got too out of shape. And uh, so I took up refing. I got an opportunity came along and said, hey, I've got this great rule knowledge and away we go. So how long have you been doing this now? Ten years. Um, best moment as an official? Best moment as, a, as an official? Well, that's a really tough question. Uh, you know what? I, there's some real good kids out there, and it's probably one of my, one of my, the best moments are when you see that kid take leadership. You know, whether it's a middle linebacker, a quarterbacker, or a center, somebody take real leadership and really direct a team. You know, it makes you feel real good as, as an official. So, so are, while you're officiating, are you watching the game with a fan's eye to it or with somebody outside of it just trying to make sure that the rules are called correctly? What you're supposed to do and what happens are maybe two different things. And that's the toughest thing to learn about officiating. So you got to stop watching the game and start watching the game. Exactly. And so you got to stop watching what everybody else sees. So when I'm the head referee, my responsibility is a quarterback. And when I'm head referee, I never get to see a completed pass. Because I'm watching the offense line, I'm watching the quarterback, I'm watching everything that goes along there. I have not a clue what happens down the field. I hear a whistle, I look downfield, and I get a signal back whether it's, whether it's right. incomplete or complete. And there's, you know, there's lots of officials on the field, four to seven, depending on the level. And so everybody's got their area of responsibility. That's the toughest see, thing to teach. I was going to ask you about, because I know that our friend Dave Donaldson, mm -hmm. who does yeah. What the Ref on this show, um, has his own job generally for the games that he does. Um, I would assume that over the years, over 10 years, you've probably done every position. Yes, done every position. What do yeah. you like best? I love the umpire position. Do you? Okay, the most why? terrifying and dangerous spot on the field because you got linebackers behind you, you got a defensive lineman in front of you, and you got an offensive lineman and a running back coming at you. Terrifying, absolutely <laughs> terrifying. But it's it's it gets you in the play, and you're right there, and it's it's exciting, and it's it's fun, and you and you you don't have to be totally in control. You do it. You're in control, but not in control of the game. You're not minding all the little p's and q's of the game. It allows you allows me to relax a little bit. It's just the spot I love. I just love that umpire. So spot. you would rather be the umpire than the head referee. Yes. 
agree. Yes, absolutely, I would. Um, it, I would guess that because of your positioning on the field, mm -hmm. while the head referee is kind of the boss and in control and probably in the end has the most authority and responsibility, the responsibility you have as, as an umpire would be, would be pretty important. It's, it's almost really more responsibility than the ref, but it's, but it's a little, it's not as visible. Uh, the umpire, you're looking, you're looking for ball placement. You're controlling the rest of the crew on the field. You're helping the head ref with, with um, the application of penalties. So as an umpire, you have to know where that penalty gets applied from and what's the consequence. What down is it? You, you have to know all that as the umpire. The head ref is really just there to float around and, and <laughs> make the signal. I, I do that all the time, so I can say that. <laughs> um, you're always looking for new officials? Always looking for new officials. We're always looking for good guys. Uh, we can start officiating. We get guys at 15 years old. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, you know. Some and you'll train them? We'll train them. We do all the training. We give them a uniform. There's no cost to come up front. They get paid per game. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's an exciting way, you know, way to get onto the football field. How do they get a hold of you? Uh, you can go to our, our website, yep. manitobafootballrefereeS.org. It's and not Manitoba Football Officials Association. That's right. It's Manitoba Football Referees Association. Uh, yes, correct. And so it's, yeah, manitobafootballrefereeS.org, and you'll find the website on there. That email address is on there to get in contact with us. And if you're us. 15, you can do these games. Absolutely, yeah. So we're looking for kids to do 10-year-olds, for instance. Yeah, ten, they start paid. at 7, and you get paid. So it's a good job. I mean, you can do three or four games in a day, and so you're making 100, 120 bucks a game. A day, I mean, yeah, not that's a game. That's pretty nice. Yeah. It's pretty, for a high it's school kid. a way to spend your summer. Yeah, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of fun. And you're getting out there, you get to stay involved with football, and help, help out kids, and that's the best part of it. Trevor, thank you. You're welcome. My Trevor pleasure. Esau, the referee-in-chief for the Manitoba Football Referees Association. When we come back, we've got lots more. This is the Huddle Community Created on Shaw TV. Welcome back to our brand new segment. It is Rifles Weekly. Uh, the season is coming up. We're not far away, a couple of months, but that's still not far away. And our first guest is a brand new player with yeah. the Rifles. Uh, Evan Vitt, uh, you playing wide receiver? Uh, no, defensive you're end. Defen your brother's wide receiver. Yeah. He's gonna play defensive end. Um, I was told that you were never this tall. Uh, no, grew about this tall last year of high school maybe. Did you? Yeah. Um, so tell us your background. You, uh, you started in St. Patel, started Greendale. Yeah. And then went to St. Patel. Tell us a little bit about your uh, football background, why you started to play, and um, why Greendale? Um, that was the closest place to where we were living at the time. We started in um, 2004, and my brother Alex played there, so I decided to play football as well. Um, were you always a defensive player? Uh, yeah. Right from the start. Yeah. So you're not like so many kids we get on the show that started out maybe on offense and moved to defense, mm -hmm. and you moved around, you always played on the defensive side of the football. Yeah. Um, is that the hammer and nail thing? You'd rather do um, the hitting? Yeah, that's a good part. Um, now, you started because your brother was a player, mm -hmm. um, but obviously you liked the game because a lot of guys start because their brother's playing, they go off and play basketball or rugby or something else. Yeah. Um, what is it about the game you like? I don't know. It just really um, helps to make a lot of friends. It's a lot of fun to play, hit people, good way to take out anger and stuff. Um, you went to school? Uh, J.H. Bruns. Uh, and um, played at the Mustangs yeah. after you left the Greendale. That's right. Um, it's a pretty good program. Mm -hmm. Um, your brother played there too? Yeah. Uh, why did the rifles come a calling? Um, did you have I've a been good going year to the last year? I'm sorry? Did you have a good year last year? At St. Vidalia. Yeah. We made it to the finals and lost. Yeah. But you but you played pretty well. Yeah. Sure. Um, so why rifles? Why would you pick the rifles over, say, the Bisons or anybody else? Well, uh, I'm not planning on going to university this year, so mm -hmm. it's obviously the next step in junior, and I didn't really go to any other camps in other provinces or anything, so it's staying home is good. So you are going to be the rifle starting defensive end, right? Tell me that. On a weak side, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> Evan Vitt, our first guest on Rifles Weekly. We're going to have somebody on from the Rifles every week right up until the start of the season, which um, goes August 11th with your preseason game. Yep, and, and then you go to Saskatoon. On the 18th, and, and then first, the first home game is the 25th. How, how, how much fun is it going to be to play in the it's new stadium? It's going to be a lot of fun. Have you been there yet? Oh, yeah, I actually have a job there. No kidding. Yeah. What are you doing? I'm doing security for the Bombers. Outstanding. Yeah. And you get to play football in the building as well. It's going to be a great year. Yeah, sure. Congrats. Evan Vitt, Winnipeg Rifles. We'll be back right after this. This is the Huddle Community Created on Shaw TV. Hi, this is Leon Centerini from Team Manitoba, and you're watching the Huddle on Shaw TV. Uh, my guest is Tannis Wilson, and I don't even know how to introduce her anymore. Um, <laughs> you do everything. I, you have, you have I fearless. I can't juggle. You have fearless. Yes. Um, you're on how many boards now? I don't know. I have six. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, flag. Yep. You have Manitoba Girls Football Association. Yep. You now maybe. Let's talk about this. 
you might have high school. Yes. Uh, tell us about high school girls football. Well, next year we're looking to introduce girls high school football in the spring. It'll play the same as all the other girls programs, right. so no competition for refs fields, right. those types of things. We really, we, so far we've had real interest from three schools. I'd say they're probably in. We're looking for a pilot league of four. We'd go to six if uh, if we could get them. Uh, three schools. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, why not? Uh, Churchill immediately s had interest. We have to talk to them yet. Uh, we have girls at Sturgeon Heights that have actually petitioned their um, principal and are talking to the, the coach on our behalf right now. One of them plays for our team, so she'll go back to high school for the last year before she comes back to Fearless again. Wow, great. So it's a good transition. It takes the 16, 17, and 18-year-olds out of the Senior Women's League, which is probably a little bit safer. Yeah. They tend to be a little bit smaller, and even from a maturity level, it's harder for them to compete with, uh, with the women. So, um, And uh, I said Sturgeon Heights, Churchill. Oh, and Miles Mack. Wow. Uh, yeah, St um, Dan Washnick was yeah. our head coach for a year, mm -hmm. and uh, we actually have just kind of set it up that we're looking to have the first high school head coach as a female, which is Andrea Weichel. They've been talking to her as a as a coach to coach the girls' high school program. So yeah, it's really exciting. We're looking at Sisler as well. Six uh, men or nine men? We'll go six or nine. It all depends. We'd have, eventually we'd like to go twelve sure. man football, but we would start with six or nine depending on the interest of, of the girls. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but it'd be uh, awesome. There's only one other girls' high school program in Canada, and that's in Sex Smith, Alberta, right now. So. Well, yeah, well, let's let's make the pitch then. Um, all you other high schools, get a hold of Tannis, play football. Or uh, or Rick. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Who so, is the commissioner for Rick, the high school? Uh, Rick Hankowitz. Yeah. Yes. Um, now let's talk about flag. Okay. Um, eight teams. Last year we had eight teams. Yeah, we'd like to expand we, or stay at eight. It's what fun. I like best about Tannis is all I have to do is say two words, <laughs> and, and off you go. Okay. Sorry. Eight teams. Eight teams. Um, we had eight teams last year. Uh, it's great. It's a modified field. It's uh, 20 by 60. It's purely recreational. It's competitive, but it's still fun. Anyone that wants to go out there and play, any of your mothers that are interested in playing, and you don't want them playing tackle football, uh, send them out to flag. It's two hand. It's uh, two two flags. It's considered non-contact because you're supposed to only grab the flag but we all know that's not always true. No, it's contact, it's not collision. It's, it is. Football's I mean it goes tackle sport. and then touch Flags and then flag. Um, well flag technically is supposed to be non-contact. Yeah, you're supposed is. to reach for the flag. I don't know, Rebecca? Anyway, <laughs> and we won't ask. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's been good. It's You only need probably nine players mm -hmm. for a team and we play all of our games in August. We play on Monday nights, uh, two games, and in September and October we play Sunday afternoons. We play two games. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, get your schedule out and reschedule everything. It's always at the same time. Uh, and you're looking for teams? We're looking for teams, we're looking for players, we're looking for anyone that's interested. Um, my email is tannis, T-A-N-N-I-S at W2F2L.com, which is the Winnipeg Women's Flag Football League. Um, you've also got uh, the end of a season. Uh, the season is over in the Women's Tackle Football League. I'm not going to talk to you about how things turned out it's by okay. teams, but I'm, I, I do want to talk to you about um, the success of the season and yeah. the number of people that are playing women's football in Winnipeg because it's not a small number. Um, mm -hmm. Saskatoon has one team, Regina yep. has one team. Calgary has one team. team. Edmonton has one team. You have two. We have two. Absolutely. And you know, it's been great. This year we had 48 women come out on our team alone. Uh, we played with probably 38 players this year, which was, was decent. We had some injuries and those types of things happen in football, but it's been it's been great. There's been lots of women. And that's why we created the Manitoba Girls Football Association three years ago. It's girls eight to 15. And so the next step for them up is the senior women's, but that's why we're trying to put in the high, high school, school league yeah. to get that, you know, a little bit more experience, a little bit movement. So there's an opportunity right now. IFAF, which is the International Federation of American Football, is looking to actually apply to uh, the Olympic committee to bring football, American football, into the Olympics. And the premise of their application is that it would be men's and women's football. So we're trying to poise, you know, Canada and Manitoba girls to be the future Olympians for, for tackle football. And, and the only way you're going to do that is to create a, a, an infrastructure underneath the senior women's programs. So we have girls 8 to 50 playing football this year or so. Outstanding. Yeah. Congrats. Thank Good you. Stuff. Let's get some high school teams. That's when we need. Absolutely. And you know what? High uh, any high schools that are interested, we, uh, Rick actually sent an email out. We've had some response. And uh, any girls, if you're interested in playing, talk to your principal. Talk to your, your football coach. Uh, St. Mary's, if you want to play, talk to St. Paul's. I've already had a few conversations with them. So, uh, But uh, if you're interested in playing at any level, uh, contact Football Manitoba. Contact me. Contact your high school. We'll find you. Outstanding. Tannis Wilson, more titles than... Yeah. Well, more titles. <laughs>
Uh, when we come back, we've got uh, lots, lots more. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. The Huddle is brought to you by Canadin's Destination Centre, Fort Gary. Tavern United, Fort Gary, a new world sports pub. Watch your favourite games on two brand new 70-inch monitors on our patio located at 1824 Pembina Highway in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Welcome back. As promised, we have Kelsey McKay, the head coach of the Vincent Massey Trojans from Winnipeg, because there's another Vincent Massey, isn't there? Vikings. The purple guys from the purple guys are Vikings yeah, from Brandon. Yeah. Uh, Kels, um, uh, uh, things are are hopping at Massey this year. Um, you're going to have a very busy season, not just with football, but with all the other things the football team is doing. Let's yeah. start with your bomber relationship. Yeah, we have a great partnership with the Bombers, where we're doing all their parking uh, at all the all the games and all the concerts, and uh, we're raising about twenty-seven thousand dollars for our program. Um, with that parking pass thing they got set up so yep. yeah we're directing everybody in to the parking lots get in to watch the show or the game for a bit and then directing them out after so when I go I want to make sure it's one of the guys that we've had on the show before so I, I, I yeah something like that you give you a good spot it. near the near the front absolutely <laughs> you have um, a lot of pull a lot of pull do you no 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 probably none at all <laughs> they're just gonna tell you where to go so to, so to speak um, there's also big changes. You've got um, um, a new scoreboard, which I guess was around last year, but you've got uh, new bleachers too. This is uh, going to be pretty much a new park. Yeah, complaint. Gary Hobson Field, which yeah. is the original home of the Fort Gary Lions. Right. Um, you know, we've you know that's sort of part of our complex now, and um, you know we have a scoreboard. Our parents raised forty thousand dollars in three months last year wow. for it. Uh, it's top of the line, and we have you know all these seventy thousand dollar bleachers coming in. The capacity about seven hundred and fifty people. Um, we're talking lights and who knows beyond that, but yeah, there's a lot going on and the iPads and uh, you know, we're getting all our helmets painted matte black and green masks and you know, and we're going to Hawaii in August. I mean, it's actually getting a little bit too much. Really? Yeah. For one coach day? No, I love it. It's awesome. Our, <laughs> kids, our kids are going to have a great experience. There's no doubt about that. No question. Now, let's talk about these iPads. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the joke, of course, is that you're green anyway, but you're yep. going greener. Um, uh, this is no paper, a paperless season of football. It's going to work? Pretty much. Like in, in the, we're sort of implementing the whole program still through our football academy class and uh, now our practices and so forth. Uh, everything is all uh, in the fall. We have, half the, we have 33 of these things. 22 just got ordered this week. So all our players and all our coaches will have one. And all our playbooks, uh, practice plans, videos, everything that we want, uh, as well as some of the extra stuff that the kids like, you know, Netflix and all that stuff. We're going to put that on there for them as well. Uh, we'll be pra um, filming practices on these, automatically uploaded to huddle.com. And, you know, that's just the way of the world. I mean, technology is everywhere, and we're just trying to keep up. And, you know, we're following a model um, that, you know, the, the Ravens and the Buccaneers started in, in right. the NFL a couple yeah. years ago. So we're going to be using programs like Coach Note and uh, mm -hmm. iTunes U and so forth uh, to help, you know, just, you know, make things a little bit more efficient, but a little bit more relative to the kids these days. Yeah, that's, that's a big part of it, too. And, and yep. um, you're coming off a pretty good season. You had not a bad year, not the worst yes. year ever. It was a pretty good season yep. for you. Um, what are we looking forward to this year, and is that going to play a role in it? Well, I think it will play, play a good role from a coaching standpoint, for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, you still got to have players who are bought in, into the program. They still got to commit and work hard. Uh, and, you know... Um, we had a pretty good year last year. I think this year, um, when we started five years ago, mm -hmm. we had a lot of kids who were high school kids who wanted to play football. Now we have football players. You know, there's a difference. There's a huge difference. The culture in our program has grown tremendously. And uh, you can just see it in how they practice, how they prepare themselves, even all the way down to their diet and so forth. Uh, it's just... It's just amazing, and, and I'm really, really excited at the support we get from the parents and from the kids. So obviously we're doing a lot of things, but it doesn't happen without their support. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty excited, you know. We'll see. One day we'll get there to the top. You know? well, you're, you're getting closer all the time. Absolutely. Kelsey, thanks a million. We're going to bring the kids on yeah. to talk a little bit about the new program and about the program. Absolutely. Kelsey McKay, the head coach of the Vincent Massey Trojans, not the Vikings, the green guys, not the purple guys, and the green guys are getting green. We did all that. I'm Scott Taylor. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Hi, I'm Carl Volney, running back for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You're watching The Huddle on Shaw TV. Welcome back. As promised, we have a couple of members of the Vincent Massey Trojans who will be um, playing with their iPods this year. Now, they're minis, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, to my far right, and I'm going to get this right, Maziar Fazel Darbandi. Yeah. 
That was right. Pretty close? That was good. Oh, great. And Andrew Place, I can do that one. Um, Maz, and I'll call you Maz because that'll make it easier. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about where you play. I know you're an offensive lineman. What position do you play, and how long have you played football? Um, I started playing football when I was 12 years old, um, Pee Wee. Started out playing quarterback, but now I play offensive line, play how center. You, how do you go from, from quarterback to the guy handing the ball to the quarterback? I don't know. Just I guess as I grew, like my body type changed, so I became I more know of an what offensive that's like. line. Yeah. I can tell you all about that. Um, did you like the line? I mean, a quarterback's a whole different deal. Yeah, it's a like way different game. Um, you have to be, playing center, you have to be just as much of a leader, but you just, your responsibilities are less, but in a way more important. True enough. Um, I will assume you started with Fort Gary. Yeah, I did. I see, I guess those things. Andrew, your defensive back. Yep. Um, how long have you played the game? Uh, grade 10 was my first year playing, and I started at Massey, so. So, is, yeah, great ten. Yeah, so this um, will be my third year coming up. Wow, um, so you've been a long way quickly. Yeah. Now you guys are going to be using this new technology. It's not really new technology, but I guess it is for football. Um, no more clipboards to throw. No. Nope. No. Nope. And, and your coaches, because they cost money, your coaches won't be tossing th them at you either, because mm -hmm. clipboards usually get tossed around. Yeah. We had Rick Henkowicz in here, the commissioner of the Winnipeg High School League, well known for tossing clipboards. So tell us a little bit about what you got. Uh, show us. Um, it, it, I like the case. I got to get a case. I have a mini at home. That's the otter. That's pretty cool. Um, so show us what you got and, and, and what you do with it. Um, so we pretty much use it to uh, watch tape, and we have our playbooks on it. So it kind of gets rid of all the paper, and it's, um, it's kind of an easier way to watch tape. You don't have to go on your computer. Or so okay, I'm going to go there. Um, you guys are going greener. Yeah. Trojans are green. See what I picked that up. Um, so, so no more paper, nothing to toss around, nothing in the garbage, and everything you need is on there. Now, are you bringing those to the sidelines with you? Um, no, uh, not to practices, no. no. Okay. It's so it's just for it's, meetings? Yeah, it's yeah. more for in-class and like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I understand you were out already using them. You were out uh, taping some practices, some workouts with the rifles. And, yeah, yeah. Um, how'd it work? Uh, we just went by to the, the rifles spring camp and same with the Biden spring camp. And we just kind of took tape of the what they were doing, and then just so we could like. So did you have the meeting about it? How'd it go? Uh, it was pretty good. People got to talk about like the things they liked about the higher level practices, um, how they were more intense, and how um, they were different from the practices we do at our level. So this has been worthwhile for you guys already. Um, yeah, I could say that. Do you like it better than just watching old film? Um, yeah, I think it's easier just. You know, it's kind of like when you, you find it hard to move, you know, you're sore after practice, you just wake up, you just grab your iPad mini and you just like go on the huddle app and you just watch tape for a bit. Very, very good idea. Um, next year, um, the Trojans just came off a pretty good season. You guys had a pretty good year. Um, your JV team had a great year. Yeah. Yep. Um, so tell us, what, what can we expect from this football team next year and will that play a major role in it? Uh, I wouldn't say the iPad minis would play a major role. But Talent still wins out, doesn't it? Yeah, like it's more of like a, a luxury, I'd say. <laughs> but How's the team going to do? Are you going to be good next year? Yeah, I think our team should be pretty good. Uh, we had like a good JV team, and last year we kind of got upset, but right. we have like a lot of uh, good leaders. I think we should have a good team. Good luck, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, congratulations on the new technology. Right. Thank the you. The Trojans going greener. When we come back, we've got lots more. We might even have Dave Donaldson this week if uh, things work out well. We've got lots of rifles. It's a green day here at the huddle. I'm Scott Taylor. That's Maz. That's Andrew. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the huddle. Scott Taylor along with uh, the defensive MVP from the Winnipeg High School Football League Senior Bowl, Collins and Gawa from the Grant Park Pirates. Congratulations. Thanks, thanks. Well done. Now, your great story, because you didn't even come to Canada till 2010. Yeah, that's right. So you've played two years of football. Yeah. Tell us where you're going next year. Uh, I'm going to play for University of Alberta. That's, uh, you've come a long way in a very, very short time. Yeah. Um, now, you played defensive tackle, but you're not going to play defensive tackle out there. Yeah, I signed to play defensive end, as in CIS, but I don't mind playing tackle there too. So. Um, you had no football background at all when you arrived? Nope, just rugby and soccer, I guess. Soccer, and, basketball. And why did you decide to play football? <laughs> That's actually interesting. When I came to, I joined Grand Park High School and the coaches kept talking to me to try out for football. So 
I just decided, I showed up once and they, they helped me put on pods and bits by bits I was in the field. Well, what's interesting about that though is, is, is that you have David Onyemata who, who um, came from Nigeria and, and kind of just walked onto the Bisons and has learned and learned and learned to become a better player. Yeah. And Izzy Adonijay was a basketball player who became a nine-man football player. Yeah. Um, so obviously you have some kind of knack for it. Did that have to do with the footwork you got from soccer or the toughness you got from rugby? I'm guessing rugby because I'm always in the rugby field. I still, like right now, I still train with them just for practices, mm -hmm. but I like rugby, it's fun. Um, one thing you learn about in rugby that, that I learned playing rugby in my day uh, and, and it was different in football is the tackling is a little bit different because it's got to be shoulder. You can't yeah. tackle with your head. Yeah, yeah. And you can't take out the knees too as in rugby chopping, as That's in right. football. But it's all fun. It's physical, and I like the physical part of it. So. What do you like best about Is that what you like best about yeah. football? Yeah. The physical part? Yeah. I'm a physical guy. Well, yeah, I would say that. If you're, you're a defensive tackle, you, you've got to be. And if you're the uh, MVP of the Senior Bowl, tell us what it was like playing the Senior Bowl, Jeff. Fun? It was fun. It's going against the best graduating kids in high school. So being up there makes you know where you're ranked, as in with your classmates. It was definitely fun, but I'm looking forward to the next level from now. Now, you came from, from Kenya, from Nairobi. Yeah, that's um, right. Why did you come to Canada, and uh, how difficult was it for you to pick everything up? Uh, I came here because my parents, my other family members were here, and my parents moved here, so I just had to move here for better opportunities, I guess. But it was fun. Like, it was hard adjusting to the system since it's kind of different from what I was used to. But definitely, I got. This is a smaller town too, now. isn't it? The Nairobi. Yeah, Nairobi's it's not. a big city. Yeah, it's it's a, it's the capital city of Kenya, so it's definitely a big city. But oh well, <laughs> it's kind of similar here, so. So you're pleased that you made the move. Yeah. That's okay. Right. What are you taking in Alberta? Business. I'm into the business program. Any reason for that? I like money, I guess. Ah, uh, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> when you sign your first contract in the CFL, you'll know exactly what you're doing. You won't need an agent. Yeah, that's big dreams. Collins and Gaywa, pleasure to meet you. Nice to Great meet stuff. you. Great stuff. Thank you very much, and congratulations on being the defensive MVP at the Winnipeg High School Football League Senior Bowl. we got lots more. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. John Mackey's a funny guy. John was making me laugh, and I, I finally got it back right before we came on. <laughs> You're a funny guy. You're doing good. Hey, you know what? What's that? Collins and Gawa was just a riveting story. Yeah. It, it, I never, love those stories. Yeah, never played football. Hey, you look like a football, football player. Come and try out. Boom, star. Yeah. Love it. I mean, he was tremendous in that senior bowl. Yeah. Outstanding sure was. player. Defensive mm -hmm. MVP. That's a great hoodie he's got. I gotta get me one of them. <laughs> Bob I Bagel think we could pull some strings. Marshawn, so I gotta get one of them. Yeah, no yeah, kidding. Great stuff. Um, uh, Tannis, how big would women's high school football be? I'm telling you, every every single time I talk to Tannis, she always has a new way of introducing women's football in some way, and now she's attacking the the high school league, and she's and the great thing about her is you can't say no to her. Oh, she doesn't allow you to say no. <laughs> no, every time she sends me an email, I just send her back an email saying yeah. yes. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Tennis, but she's like. she's done wonders for the yes, sport for absolutely. women's women's tackle football yeah. in uh, in Manitoba, and it's kind of. Taken off in Canada right across the board. Schools. It would be huge. Yeah, it would be. It would be the next level. Oh, absolutely. And um, the, the kids from uh, uh, Vincent Massey. Um, I am going to say this as I leave. Um, Maz. Maz. Maziar Fazel Diabandi. There you go. That's, that's how you say it. Yes. He's Boy, those kids are spoiled. Up. Yeah, they are. They got iPads. And, and, and Kelsey McKay puts Netflix on oh. for them. <laughs> nice <laughs> life. And they're going to Hawaii. Right. No kidding. That's uh, great. I wish Kelsey's done that. a great job with that program. Yes. He's uh, really turned it into something that, of a professional type football program. And uh, can't say enough good things no, about Vincent can't. Massey. They've just done great stuff. Um, everybody does great stuff, even you. Oh, well, thanks. But you make me laugh. <laughs> uh, John Mackey, my co-host. I'm Scott Taylor. This has been The Huddle. Come on back next week. It's Community Created on Shaw TV.
Huddle is brought to you by Canadin's Destination Centre Fort Gary, Tavern United Fort Gary, a new world sports cup. Watch your favourite games on two brand new 70-inch monitors on our patio located at 1824 Pembina Highway in Winnipeg, Manitoba.